hello guys welcome to this lecture we're going to continue to talk about probability we're going to see how we can uh, represent uh, probability information using uh, the venn diagram so the venn diagram in this case we have uh, two diagrams uh, both having the same information but one is uh, representing mutually exclusive events and the other is uh, representing non-mutually exclusive events for the mutually exclusive event, we have our uh, two circles uh, that are not overlapping. Uh, one uh, is representing those uh, who do mathematics or take mathematics, and the other is um, representing those who do biology. Okay, so the box should be like the sample space which contains everything, both those who do math, biology, and those who do not do biology. Okay. So for this particular case, we can see that the people that number of people that do math is 20, and the number of do number that do uh, that does uh, biology is uh, 30. Okay. Now, if you come on this side, you are going to notice that the number that does um, math only is 15. The number that does um, both subjects is five. And of course, the number that uh, is doing um, biology only is 20. Okay, so for us to compute the number of people or the probability of uh, people that do both math or biology, we take the probability of uh, math plus probability of biology, which should give us 1. Probability of math should be 20 out of 50. Probability of biology should be 30 out of 50. 50 because the total is uh, 50. And remember that the probability is always out of total okay then when we come here the probability of math or biology is going to be slightly different because uh, we have intersection okay so we're going to do probability of math which is everything in the circle for math plus probability of biology which is uh, everything in the circle for biology and then minus probability of math and biology and the reason we're subtracting is that when we do the take the probability of um, those that do math only math we are including five which is intersection when we take the probability or number of people that do biology we are including five again so we have to subtract one of the fives okay that's why we have minus p m and b okay so let's look at some numbers here for the mutually exclusive events, that's the one in red. The total is 50, like I said before, 20 plus 30. Then the probability of math, of getting somebody who is taking math, is 20 out of 50, which reduces to 2 fifths. The probability of getting somebody who is uh, taking biology is 30 out of 50, which reduces to 3 fifths. Then the probability of those doing math and biology is zero because there's no intersection. There's nobody doing both math and biology. Okay. Probability of doing math only should be the same thing as uh, the probability of those doing math. That should be two fifth. Probability of uh, people doing biology only should be the same thing as. Uh, the probability of uh, those taking biology which we already found here to be three fifths so when we go to the right the non mutually exclusive events the total is 40 how do we how did we get this 40 is 15 plus 5 plus 20 that's 40 okay now the probability of those taking math math is right here 20 out of 40 15 plus 5 that's 20 out of 40 that's one half then probability of uh, those taking biology should be everything here, 25 out of uh, 40. That reduces to 5 over 8. Then probability of those taking math and biology should be 5 out of, uh, you can see right here, 5 out of uh, 40, which is uh, 1 eighth. Probability of those taking math only should be right here, 15 out of 40, which reduces to 3 eighths. And then the probability of those do, who are doing uh, taking biology only should be 20, 20 right here divided by 40, which is uh, one half. Okay, so that is uh, just a summary of uh, uh, what is going on here. Now, 
let's talk about complement of an event the complement is uh like finding uh what is not so the complement is um, denoted by x to the power of c that is the you know the chance that the event will not occur so if we have a probability of x to the power of c is just the same thing as one minus probability of x so for example if the probability of an event happening x is 0 0.55 then the probability of x to the power of c which is the probability that it will not happen is 1 minus 0 0.55 which gives us 0 0.45 okay so if the probability of um, the, uh, the probability of not getting a red car is the same thing as 1 minus probability of uh, getting a red car okay so let's move to conditional probability uh, we write an event conditional event like this event a occurs given that event b has already happened so the probability of A given that B has happened is uh, expressed like this. A given that B has happened. So this is the formula. Probability of A and B. Remember A and B can also be written as A intersection B. Like right here. This is A intersection B. So you can use this or that. Probability of A and B divided by probability of B which is the same thing as number in A and B divided by number in B. Okay, so going down, we're going to illustrate this using the example in the table. I have here red cars, the uh, color of cars, red and green. And then on the columns, I have uh, ethnicity, Hispanic, black or Asian. So what this means is that 12 people that drive uh, red cars are Hispanic. 20 people that drive red cars are black and so on okay so overall total is 125 if we look on this side the row totals 50 and 75 for red and green cars then the rows or the columns have the totals 37 38 50 for hispanic black and asian respectively so we have uh, further information here probability of red you look at red was red red is 50, we have 50 people who have uh, who drive red cars, 50 out of 125. Okay, probability of black is the total number of black, 38 divided by 125. Probability of red and Asia, red and Asia, those that do drive red cars and Asia, that's 18 of them, 18 out of 125. Then probability of Asia, total number of Asia, 50 divided by overall total. Okay, so when we asked to find we're asked to find the probability of red driving a red car given that the person is asian we're going to use the formula we have up here okay so you can see here we say a given b we have red given asia so a is red and b is asian okay so you just do the substitution so now the probability of red and asia is going to be you go to the intersection of red and asia right here that's 18 out of 125 out of 125 divided by probability of Asian. Asian, how many Asians? That's 50 out of 125. Now remember that every time we talk about probability, we are talking about a required number or the required number divided by the overall total. Okay? So when you do this, you are going to get 18 divided by 50, which is equal to 9 over 25. We can actually show you here how to do this. I can do 18, 18 divided by 125 divided by 50, let's put parentheses, 50 divided by 125. Okay, so when I do this, this is what I get 0.36. Remember, I told you that. Uh, probabilities can be decimal can be fractions or percentage but i want to change this 0.36 to fraction to do that i'm going to go to math you can see number one is uh, the one you do it changes to fraction so enter and i enter again that gives me gives me nine out of 25 which i got here now another way to do this is just to use this particular formula it says number in a and b and what's that number asia and uh, red is 18 out of what number in b 
So that number is uh, actually Asian, number in Asian. Okay? So you can see 18 out of 50. This is what we got here. 18 out of 50. Okay? So that's 18 out of uh, 50, which reduces to 9 out of uh, 25. Okay? So if you think about this, this is actually talking about go to Asia. How many are red? 18 out of the total of Asia. That's a simple way of looking at this. You go to the Asian column. How many are red compared to the total? So that's how we got 18 out of 50, which reduces to 9 out of 25. So that's how we compute the conditional probability. When we look at the next thing here, independent events, two events are said to be independent if the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. So if events A and B are independent, then probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. So what are we saying? If I have that probability of A, for instance, is equal to 0 0.6, and then the probability of uh, B is equal to 0 0.4. Now, if I also have that the probability of A and B is equal to 0 point, 0 0.24, then it means that A and B are independent events. Why? B, probability of A and B is the same thing as the probability when I multiply the two individual probabilities. Okay? Now, if I have probability of A and B to be something like 0 0.20, and it's no longer equal to the product of the two individual probabilities. Okay, so in that case, we'll say that not independent. But in this case, the products are the same thing as a probability of A and B. So we say the two events are independent. Okay, now unusual events are events um, whose probability give us less than 0 0.05. So if we have two, two events and their probabilities, sorry, if the probability of an event gives us uh, any value less than 0 0.05 we say that uh, the event is unusual so the probability that gives us a value of less than 0 0.05 is considered an unusual event okay so that is how we are going to end today's lecture uh, we're going to move to something else next time thank you see you next time